it's crazy, crazy 24 hours. We've had five or six come through the door already and we're not done. Yeah, it's just, you got to love these transfer day deadlines there. Yeah. I mean, Nottingham Forest, just, I mean, ever since you got promoted to the Premier League last season, you just seem to be making a signing a day pretty much every day <laughs> till, to, till this current day. So what, what is going on with Forest? I mean, never stop spending money. Well, it's it's all all dependent on this Brennan Johnson deal. We spent big last year, about 140, 150 million pounds. And, you know, what other promoted club did that? The other two that came up with us didn't spend that much. Look at the three that came up this year. They would kill to spend what we've spent. And it's all about Maranakis. Maranakis' ambitions for the club is just huge. And he's putting his money where his mouth is. And for me, he just has to take all the plaudits for what he's doing right now. And... You know, we want to be an established Premier League team again. It's where we belong. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have to get signings in. I mean, Sangare is done from what I'm being told now. And that is just ridiculous. <laughs> it's crazy so, that he's coming. I mean, it is, yeah. it is an unbelievable deal for someone of that stature to come into Nottingham yeah. Forest this season. But I'm guessing that deal is, is very much reliant on Brennan Johnson leaving the club. Yeah. There's been a lot of rumours and a lot of talk that Brennan Johnson to Spurs is very much advanced. So we want to get your opinion on that deal. And uh, first of all, give me your um, what you think of how Brennan Johnson has done for Nottingham Forest so far and what he'll bring for, to Spurs. Brennan Johnson for Forrest has just come through the ranks and year on year, his growth has been exponential. He got loaned out to Lincoln a couple of seasons back, did a great job there. Then he came last, well, last, last season. Now, as we look at it in the championship, got us the goals that got us up. Um, he just scares the defense. And even last year, look, we play a low block system in the Premier League. And for a kid to debut in the Premier League, score eight Premier League goals, I think he got 11 in all competitions. In a team that's not playing attacking football, should tell you guys exactly what you're getting. He's lightning fast. I know everyone always talks about his pace, but it's something that we've utilized um, last year. And his finishing is very clean. You know, he puts away most of his chances and he scores some great goals. For me, the highlight goal last year was against Leeds from just around the edge of the box, smacks it in. He's not afraid to have a shot. And I, and I heard what you guys were saying about him earlier, and I agree with pretty much everything you've said. I know there's a bit of a debate in the Spurs fan base. As you guys know, my brother's a Spurs fan. I've been trying to convince him <laughs> that he's better than Kulisevsky. And, um, you know, that debate's been ongoing. But I honestly genuinely believe if you put Brennan Johnson in an attacking team, now, if you still had Conte in charge, I'd be saying to you guys, I don't think it will work. But with your new boy in charge, the style of football you're doing, he's going to be ideal for you. And yes, predominantly he plays on the right-hand side. He has played as the nine for us as well. It's not his position. So any Spurs fans thinking he's coming in to replace Kane, that's not what you're getting. He's, he's, he can do it, but he's not you don't get the best out of him. And very occasionally he has been switched over to the left. It's something that I think Cooper should have experimented a bit more with, inverting him so he can cut in and shoot more. Um, but I, honestly, I, I think this will be a great move for Forrest and a great move for Spurs because you're lacking in pace for me up front and you put him out wide. There's not many wingers that are going to score you the amount of goals that he can bring. And that's something that you know needs to be taken into account, boys. Yeah, and talking about, yeah, one of the questions I was going to ask is what you feel his best position is. You're very clear about him being a right winger. So his competition yeah. will be Kulisevsky. And how we um, like to play with our wingers at the moment, very much stay out wide. We like to manipulate the play so that our wingers get one-on-one -on -one situations yeah. with their fullback and like to take them on, especially around the outside. Now, I've had my question marks about his ability to operate in those wide areas when maybe space is kind of um, taken away from him. Because I feel like, as you say, Nottingham Forest like to pay a bit more low block and transitional in the Premier League but that in a weird, weird way when you do get a chance to attack that will leave a lot of space for Brendan Johnson that's kind yeah. of into to yeah. his benefit so how do you feel like he'll fare if the space is a bit squeezed and he doesn't have that the the, the space to kind of because he likes to kind of push the ball past the defender run the other side but when he's not exactly afforded that. that space how do you think he'll fare when he's the maybe the ball's a bit um, tighter to him fullbacks are tighter to him and he has to operate in smaller spaces that's a developmental point for me with Brennan. He's he's traditionally worked last year, especially with a lot of space. Now, where where that will work for him, he's not the player, as you say, that can skill a player 
go around him and then accelerates off. He's he's Roy, he's a kind of push and run um, wide player. Now, where he will work well, if I take you back and I'm going to talk about my other boy that you lot messed up with, Jed Spence. When <laughs> when we were playing in the chair, yeah, <laughs> let's not go down you that You could have road. taken him back if you wanted, Wolfie. It was available for you guys this summer. <laughs> We've already got like five right backs now, but where he works well, if you want him in those tight spaces, you need that overlapper coming from your fullback position. Him and Jed Spence had really good chemistry. Yes, it was in the championship, but you need your fullback to help create that space for Jono to run into. And you need to get those overloads in there. That for me, if you're playing in those tighter spaces where maybe you're pushing uh, the opposition defense a bit deeper, that's where you're going to need him to double up with the fullback. And that's how you'll get the best out of him. But as he is now, taking on a player in tight spaces isn't his thing. But the other thing he's done, he's bulked up a little. He looks a lot stronger, especially last season. So physically, I mean, he cleaned out Richarlison at the city ground, didn't he? <laughs> when he tried to ball juggle um, that right. one. So he's, he's got a bit of aggression on him as well. And guys, let's not forget his age. He's 22. He's still got his best years ahead of him. And I think my worry for him is that he will be judged quickly by the Spurs fans. Whereas at Forest, he's always been like one of our own, born and bred in Nottingham, raised through. And we've been patient with him, especially at the start of last year, um, where potentially people were saying, was he worried about the World Cup and staying fit for it, etc. But coming back from the World Cup, that's when he just accelerated and he got all those goals for us. Yeah, and, and also, um, you know, one thing that's quite vital for a winger at Tottenham is being able to create chances, cutbacks, crosses in the box. Obviously, yeah. he seems like more of a goal scorer, um, uh, to be honest, from what I've seen. He seems more of like a wide forward than a winger. But do mm. you think he has it in his game? Like, do you see maybe, does he set up chances for Forest players and gets let down with their finishing or stuff like that? Or is he, is he much more of a goal scorer than a creator from the wide area? Initially, I'd say a goal scorer, but his game developed into crossing as well. He's not a high crosser of the ball. He, he usually plays a low one in. And we saw towards the back end of last season, the link up playing between him and Awani was part of the reason we were able to stay up. So what, what you can get with him is he'll get in behind those defenders. If you've got the numbers in the box, now traditionally with Forrest last season, it was one or two if we were lucky. But if you guys are breaking your midfielders in there, then he, he can, he has the potential to find it. But I would say it's a developmental point again for him. His crossing was really bad at the start of last season. He sometimes would ignore an easy squared ball across um, to go and shoot instead. But you saw that develop uh, in the latter half of last season. And, and the thing with him, he's keen to learn. He knows his potential and he knows he needs to listen to people to, to take that next step up. And I think you're going to get someone who's just ready and willing. And, you know, he honestly, guys, he's got the potential. You guys were talking about Gordon earlier, his 45 million price tag or whatever it was. Jono outdid him last season, in my opinion, in terms of goals and what he provided. And that, again, I'll reiterate, is in a low block team. You put him into the style of football you guys are now playing. Because one of his negatives, if I give you his negatives, is he's not very good at tracking back and defending. A lot of the time it's under instruction from Cooper and the management to keep him forward to kind of give the opposition something to worry about. But defending wise, if you're going to look for that in him, again, another thing that needs to develop. I, I, and I'm guessing because we're we're kind of, we're kind of transitioning to a bit of a high pressing team. Like yeah. obviously Forrest don't really press that much, but when he does, when you do have those opportunities to press, is that something he's kind of capable of? Yeah, it, it is one of my biggest frustrations that we don't press at all. Um, but he's got the pace to press, and I don't know why it's not done. So pressing from the front line is something I think he's more than capable of if he's instructed to do it. He hasn't been under Forrest. Um, and I think that will help you. With his pace, if he can put the pressure on those defenders, you could turn the ball over quite high up in the opposition half. Or at least even him just closing down could create the pressure of a bad pass um, from the opposition and create those turnover opportunities. So, yeah, it's something that he hasn't had to do at Forest, but not because he hasn't wanted to do it necessarily, but it's been under instruction. Get 11 men behind the ball in our half, be organized. John are usually left up higher on the right hand side of us but yeah that's that's how i'd read that 
Is he um, also, is he a two-footed player? How's his, how's his weak foot or is he very reliant on his right foot? Um, his left foot's okay. He's, uh, you know, I'd say like 80, 85% right footed, but he's not scared to shoot with his left foot. Um, I, I would say majority of his goals off the top of my head have come from his right foot. He's not good in the air. I'll tell you that that's his weakness. He won't be in there to, to bang a, a header into the back of the net. But left foot, he won't be scared to shoot with his left foot. But predominantly, his favoured shot is that that shot across goal from the right hand side going into the far corner. Um, but if you get him in behind the defence, you can't catch him. You can't catch him. As you boys were saying earlier, it was only late in the season that Kyle Walker overtook him uh, for being mm. the quickest in the Premier League, and he's only 22. He's still going to get faster. In, t in terms of like how he performed, because we're going to have a lot of possession and we're going to try and be like a lot of the time passing, moving and yeah. stuff like that. Do you like when he's not on the wing and he's maybe asked to come inside and link play a bit, little passes with one touch passing and stuff like that. Do you think that is, that's part of his game that he would also excel in? Or do you think, you know, sometimes his first touch can be off or sometimes he can frustrate with like misplaced passes? Or do you think that that's stuff that he can excel at? Yeah, he's okay at doing the one-two link-ups. As I was saying with Jed Spence, it was fantastic. He's done it last season with Morgan Gibbs-White. I feel sometimes he finds himself running out of space where he gets too tight to the touchline. And then I've seen it a few times where he literally just runs the ball out of play because he's not got nowhere to go. But the link, he will look to do those quick one twos, get in behind the defender. And, you know, if you've got, you got Madison now, I'm sure Madison mm -hmm. will be able to find those passes. So I see that as a good connection um, coming up with him. But in general, look, don't get me wrong, he's got a lot of development still to go. But if you look at his trajectory and the path so far, it's on the up and up. And, and he's not going to shirk the responsibility. The, the thing I would say to you guys, though, um, again, just to kind of give a balanced argument to the conversation, is that he can drift out of games. So mm -hmm. you will find that he can, in some matches, just be a moments uh, player. Um, but, you know, again, you've got to take into account the style of football that Forrest are playing. So don't expect him to be involved 19 minutes in a match, or what is it these days, 115 <laughs> minutes with all the injury time in it. So yeah, yeah. You, you know, but expect that from him, but expect that he will drift out of games, but then he will have those magical moments. And when he shoots, it's usually on target or in the net. What's the uh, the kind of Forrest's fans opinion on the price point? You're talking about 45 to 50 million. A lot of Spurs fans are saying it's way too much. We shouldn't be paying this much for someone like Brennan Johnson. Uh, what's the feeling within the Nottingham Forest fan base uh, about the price that he's going for? You got some Forest fans who've got him at 30 and some that got him at 100 and some that have got him as unsellable. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, I'm not even joking. Uh, I, I personally benchmarked him against Gordon, I think is, is the best example. Look, they're not identical in their play style, but I think uh, 40 to 50 million is a fair price, in my opinion, because you've got to add in the other things. You lost Harry Kane, homegrown player. You're going to need your quota. Um, yeah. in there yes it might not impact you this year but you know he is welsh but he is born and bred nottingham and that in itself adds a tax the, the other thing you gotta look at is you know you've had um the man city player going to chelsea who's had minutes in the premier league not um you know you know not a whole season and he's gone for what was it 45 million so in the market we're currently sitting in i think 50 million is a fair price and i think his value will go up as, uh, as he starts to excel at Spurs. I do get the debate, I really do, but we've got to, we've got to understand the market we're living in. The, you know, I remember when Collymore went back in the day, it was like eight and a half, eight million, whatever it was. And I was like, wow, you know, and, and now you can barely get yourself a, a youth player these days for that. So it's, we've got to understand the market we're living in. We, we really do. And you've got to add that tax because he's homegrown. Yeah, just, but despite the market, as a Forest fan wanting to keep one of your best players, are you a bit frustrated with the board that they've allowed, they're potentially allowing him to leave on deadline days, you know, so close to the end of the window when it's maybe going to be difficult to get the targets you want to replace him? Or do you, are you more like of the understanding side, like when you get that kind of price, you just got to accept it? Um, for, for me personally, I, I feel like it's been on the cards all summer. Um, there's been heavy links with him with Brentford. Brentford have had, I think, a 43 million bid rejected a few weeks ago. They put a 30 million bid in at the start of the window. So um, 
because we are tight on FFP, look, we can't, as far as fans, sit there and clap every single signing and expect more and not understand that players have to leave to balance the books. Um, the frustration for it, uh, for me is some of the silly deals we've done, bringing in Chris Wood for 19 million. Nothing against the actual player, but a deal of 19 million in total for someone who's in his 30s. That frustrates me. So you do ask the question, had we not done some of these deals, would we have had to get rid of our prized asset? But the other key thing that Forest fans have to understand is because he's come through the academy, because he's one of our own, he goes down as complete profit on FFP. He, it's better to sell him than to sell a Taiwo or a Morgan Gibbs White because this is an academy player who's come through the system. And I think Forest fans do understand that. He will always hold a special place in our heart. When you guys come to the city grounds, he'll be applauded. There's no two ways about it. We love him, but we do understand that football has to be run as a business. You know, if you want to keep the doors open, then you sometimes have to sell your prize assets. All right. All right, Wolfie, thank you so much for coming on today. Some really uh, good and positive insight into Brennan Johnson. Hopefully the words that you've given us is go some way to swaying some of those Spurs fans that were on the fence on him. But um, yeah, thanks for coming on today, mate. Yeah, no worries. I'm still trying to persuade my brother, but I'll bring him around as well, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will. You, you definitely done uh, good words to convincing a lot of the Spurs fans. So uh, we'll speak to you soon and hopefully we'll catch up when uh, when our clubs play each other. Yeah, looking forward to it, boys. Thanks for having us on as always and speak soon. Cheers, Appreciate mate. it, Wolfie.